Okay, so tonight's stream was billed as a mystery guest, and the anticipation has reached an all-time high. Ladies and gentlemen, it's none other than Lizzie, RJ, and Joe, part of the Grammy-winning Central PA legendary band, Hailstorm. Welcome, guys. Hey. Thanks for having us and i think we need to have you just intro us like when we like go to the grocery store just like everybody please ladies and, and gentlemen <laughs> that I, was good... that job. I will be your personal uh in introducer i guess we could say ladies and gentlemen of kroger <laughs> <laughs> the great and powerful hailstorm <laughs> absolutely well I, uh, if i can i'll start off by saying thank you to each one each and every one of you uh, for taking the time to speak with me and ultimately you know taking this chance to reach out to your central pennsylvania fans uh, so this past oh, yeah. year, Harold Storm was voted into the 2020 class of the Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame. Woo. So how does that make you guys feel now to be able to have the title claim of Hall of Famers and what kind of reactions have you got? Oh, it, it's great, man. Uh, it's it's wonderful to, I, I mean, Hailstorm was was birthed in Pennsylvania and, uh, the, you know, it's like we cut our teeth there and um, you know, it, it grew up there, you know, listened to all the local bands and, you know, it just, it's, it's great to, I don't know, have some re respect from the, for, from the some local scene, some recognition, yeah. oh, cool. you know, yeah. it's, it's a beautiful thing. I, I mean, we always said when we were coming up that it takes a village to break a band. And if it wasn't for central PA and all the music fans and all this, all the local bands that gave us a chance and let us open up for them or, or took us out of state for the first time, um, we truly wouldn't be where we are. So thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a no brainer as far as voting you guys in. So you, you guys are great, but Let's, uh, I don't know, let's take a, a, a trip in the time machine. So take us back to, you know, the 1990s and, and starting Hailstorm off as a family band, you know, brother, sister, dad. Tell us about that for a second. Yeah, um, well. So Joe's our dad. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just you the beard. Great. You look great for your age. He looks good. Um, Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. No. <laughs> he, mo he moisturizes. Uh, <laughs> Everywhere. Well, so so RJ and I, it, it started out as as just RJ and I as a duo, and we we started the band summer 97. Uh, we entered ourselves in a talent show, the Schuylkill County Fair of Central PA, um, and we and uh, we, we rolled there and we literally named the band in the family van on the way to that show. Um, we ended up uh, getting the third place trophy, but losing to the tap dancing cowgirl. Yep. And uh, but but it was just such a crazy thing. I remember like RJ and I looking at each other afterward, and we were like shaking with like just you know adrenaline because we had never really performed outside <laughs> of our parents' living room, and we're like, well, man, do you think like mom and dad know another place we could play like let's yeah. let's do this and then and then all bets were off like that night we're we're having you know chicken and mashed potatoes at the family table and we're just rg and i are just going off about like dude we're, we're a band and this is all we now this is what we got to do it again where can we go and and then uh and then yeah we're like well well dad plays bass um let's do that so yeah it's yeah. I, I look back on those times fondly you know yeah it was uh uh it, yeah, it was like we we played a three minute. Actually, it was more like a seven minute song with like a, it was like a three minute song with a four minute drum solo in the middle. So where it's like we just gotta throw everything, the whole kitchen sink in this one song, and and yeah, we just got hooked on performing. We got hooked on being on a stage and being in yeah. front of an audience, even though the audience was like maybe eight people. We were just like, yeah, what's up, Schuylkill County? Yeah, it was like either it was like a, a rotating audience because it's at the fair. But like, yeah, the people that were like definitely in the audience were like all the parents of whoever. There's some goats. There was eating corn dogs like, what is this? You know, yeah. Parents, yeah. <laughs> that's great. I mean, do you guys remember, you know, beyond that, then kind of growing as a band in the local scene? Is there any kind of like venues that stood out, the favorite places to play or, you know, where you had a decent crowd or I don't know, any memories as far oh, as. Yeah, dude. There was a one one of our favorite places to this day, and I and and it's still runs the Tourist Inn in Hellum. Yeah, um, is that's, that place still there? I I think so. Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah, awesome. uh, we got to go back. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The, I yeah, mean, the, the, I mean the 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 Bloody Marys taste like ketchup, and <laughs> it still has the same carpet from 1982. But it's just it's so great. We 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 literally you know grew up there. Um, I think the first time that we played there, I was probably 16 or something like that. Um, there's also, also the Rusty Nail in Harrisburg. Uh, there's uh, Fiddlesticks. Um, man, RJ, what, what else? There's, there yeah. was, 
there well, was some- I, I I remember like being the local lo- yokel band and kind of becoming friends with the radio station, uh, you know, one hundred five seven the X, and um and they would kind of put us on some some like national bands. We'd be kind of the local yokel opener, first of like you know seven local bands and then the main headliner there was the chameleon club in mm-hmm. lancaster yeah. there was crocodile rock, rock, rock in allentown yeah. and so like those were those were just like dream come true gigs we're just like oh my god we're we're doing it we're we're, we're, we're getting kitty there on point or whatever you know is yeah and non point kitty send us uh yeah Specifically, you know, it's funny you mentioned Croc Rock specifically because they have a couple different, they had, a, well, when they still existed, they had a couple different, like, venues in the building. So there was, like, the Boom Boom Room, which was, like, the goth, like, under <laughs> in the basement. We started yeah. there, and right. then we, like, did, like, the restaurant, then we did the outdoor tiki thing, and then, like, we finally, like, made it, proved ourselves, and, you know, we're on the, the, the main stage opening up for the Nationals. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's really crazy because we think about the, the venues that took a chance on us, but also, like, like I said before, all of the bands like, you know, Spine Belt and Dead Leaves and, you know, I, there, there's, there were so many bands that just took a chance on a couple kids and like, we didn't know what we were doing, you know, and, and most of those bands were way heavier than we were. So, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of people ask like, so when was the moment that you realized you made it? Mm-hmm. And for us, it was so gradual. We're just like, well, that's impossible to say. But I think that a milestone for us was when we finally got signed and started and we became a national band and then we went back and actually headlined these venues that we used to play yeah. in the basement or open up for headliners at. Mm-hmm. And we were like the main headline and we were packing the place. And that was when we were like, oh my God, I, I, like it, it was surreal. It's like, how did we, this journey was so long and here we are, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, guys. I mean, you know, like we we represent a lot of the the local and the regional bands in this area now. And, you know, heck, I'm in two bands as well. And I mean, just to kind of hear those things from you, I mean, those are the sentiments that we feel as well. You know, we yeah. we move from the Lizard Lounge at Chameleon Club and hope to play. On yeah, the main- we get there. It's like, yeah, you know, like we made- Lounge. <laughs> so I know I can yeah. speak on behalf of a lot of the existing local bands in the area um, that the the feelings are mutual. And, uh, you know, everybody hopes to attain to the status where you guys are at as well. So Aww. um so, you know, moving beyond that, then you get to the point where, you know, dad kind of, I don't know, doesn't fit the vibe anymore. You know, how did uh, Joe and Josh come to be part of the band then? Well, Joe, maybe, you could... maybe Joe can take that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I answer, you remember Origivation Magazine? Um, sure, yeah. Yeah, the, the, these Hail Kids put out a, an ad. They wouldn't say who they were. And even if they did, I didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, what, what was it? 2003. Yeah. I just uh, moved back to Pennsylvania from doing some college in Virginia. And uh, the, I answered the ad and it was the only ad I've ever answered to like play something because it said, Oh, we can play some like big venues. And I was like, well, I like playing big venues, you know, and, and they were, you know, it was kind of, we, we embellished it a little yeah, bit. Little yeah. bit <laughs> but uh, Like the tourist in. Yeah, and uh but you know i I went and auditioned at dave ivory's studio there and you know what did we do we jammed through like i think it was it's "It's not Not you You, and then this other song that you wrote and um it i don't know it was fun i was like oh man that girl can sing that's pretty cool and uh i don't know you called me back yeah well whatever that was fun yeah, and you were late because my dad gave you the wrong directions. I mean, he just missed, you know. <laughs> Mr. Turd. I was like, this doesn't, I'm just driving in circles. Yeah. Love you, dad. Well, I, I will tell you something that, that, you know, RJ and I, the reason we called Joe back is because we, we were auditioning a bunch of people. And um, at the time we were using David Ivory studio to record and just because, you know, we, he had equipment and <laughs> we didn't have the proper equipment at home. And, and, um, and we had auditioned a bunch of people and everybody just wanted to just noodle over everything. And it was all about them. It was all about that individual person. I, I have to impress you. I have to do this. And, you know, we had at this point in time in in our, you know, our early career, you know, we had seen a lot of that. We had, you know, we've met a lot of bands that, you know, it's okay. There's that one guy that it's just, it's all about him. And we really wanted to find people that we're, we were able to collaborate with and that would actually listen to the song. Most of the people that, that auditioned, they wouldn't even listen to the song. They're just off in outer space somewhere. I'm like, yeah, just 
hey dude it's not that hard it's, it's yeah. just like four chords just right. hold on and uh and joe was the only guy that actually was like he listened to it for a second that he like wrote he wrote a, a part like just this melodic you know high information for for uh for the chorus of it's not you which ended up going on our first record and yeah, and yeah. i i just i and he was a nice guy and he was also you know one of the only ones that was close to our age because <laughs> we're like we might as well just have dad back in if we're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. solo over everything because I, I didn't know how then that was the, <laughs> that was the beautiful thing you know and uh so, so it we, works yeah. so i i called him back later in the week and and um his mom answered and uh and we set up some time to come out to the old you know hail basement and uh and jam and your first gig was at uh rock the block Shemokin, in shimokin yeah, yeah. Nice. once once we heard your mom's adorable wisconsin accent we were like yes That's the we were guy. like oh hi <laughs> yes. we don't know about this joke hi. his mom's adorable Do you um to talk to joel no, as, as far as Josh goes, so so he after brought worse, yeah. yeah, Mama Hots definitely makes the best brats. Yeah. Um, so uh, so then so after that, so so uh, it was Joe and RJ and I, and then we would have kind of this like rotating. There was like some bass players that we knew in the scene that were just kind of helping us fill in gigs, sure. and then uh, and we would go out to the you know and see local bands all the time, and we went out to see uh, this this you know individual his name is james harvey and josh was uh high school buddies with the guy and was his bass player and so we literally went out and we we just couldn't take our eyes off josh we're like how do we get him how do we get josh he's living, so good. Living shit out of that yeah he's is uh, we need josh so so we kind of fibbed a little bit we we told josh we're like well what's your schedule like you know and he's like well i don't have a whole lot of gigs with james harvey and and um and we're, we're like well we have more gigs than that and we can pay you in beer so <laughs> Uh, so, so can you like just come, come, come be our temporary bass player for a while? You'll have a lot of fun, and uh, and so like you know whatever months go by and he's still our temporary bass player. And um, I forget what what we were coming back from. I think it was something in either Dewey Beach or something in Maryland. And we're we're driving home and we got Josh drunk and he's like, Lizzie. I, I gotta call up my my best bud and I gotta I gotta break his heart and I'm like I'm like oh really and and he's like well because I really want to be in your band like like would you have me like and I'm like dude yeah. that's been the plan the whole time you're already in so and then then he threw up on a cop shoot yeah then we got pulled over <laughs> <and he threw. laughs> sloshy came out that night yeah Feel the deal yeah all all good steps in identifying a potential band member for sure <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, you know, I mean, and then we fast forward the tape, you know, as far as, you know, how uh, acclaimed you guys have gotten women winning Grammys, you know, you guys are notoriously known as one of the bands that are out there constantly, you know, over 250 shows a year. And then, you know, here comes 2020 and the pandemic. So how have you guys kind of, you know, improvise on that? How has that affected your life from, you know, show schedule and, and just you as people? It, it's been, a, it's been, we've been trying to stay positive it's also been really hard because um no strikes and gutters tops and downs. yeah 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 uh, but <laughs> so so you know talking about kind of like where we where we started even when little bro and i were in middle school starting this band we at least had a bowling alley gig twice a month you know so this is the longest we've ever gone in the history of hailstorm without having a live show in front of people yeah. and yeah. uh and that's been really hard because it's such a part of your life it's it's not touring isn't just like oh yay we're gonna go tour and we're gonna play shows it's it's become you know not only the biggest drug in your life that you can that believe me we've tried and you can't fill that hole with anything else that the live show is its own drug and you can't get it anywhere um but uh but not just that it's it's part of our identity so we've had to kind of look at ourselves in the mirror and be like okay who are we without this and what can we do to keep our sanity and to keep that joy you know when everything was just we didn't even we didn't know what was going to happen so right. yeah, yeah you, you write music yeah you, you do whatever you can do to stay creative and you know you look forward yeah. to what may come you and know saying saying yes to adventures that you know like okay let's distract us with stuff and rj's doing a podcast i've done a bunch of hosting gigs and shows and weird other weird things so yeah joe's just 
growing his hair. <laughs> I'm just pushing, pushing it out. I like it, man. Speaking of podcasts, it looks like RJ, you're uh, hosting your own podcast. Hey, now. you want to be a guest? <laughs> We're taking anybody. <laughs> no, no, uh, you're you're right. Uh, like like Lizzie said, like this uh, this year without touring has really pushed us to be to tap into different creative outlets and uh yeah uh hosting and comedy writing songwriting all those things uh, we feel i think we i feel like we've all gotten stronger at that and the the proof is in the pudding when it, when we're in the studio with nick and we're just churning out songs we're like oh damn we're we're really hitting our stride here so uh, i feel pretty i feel pretty good that when we it's also been a well-deserved break for me too physically like just you know <laughs> non-stop touring since since I was, God, Ten. in my <laughs> a little teenager, well, really. and uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I feel like when we come back at it, I'll, I'll, I'll feel rested, rejuvenated, and ready to ready to attack. You know, that's great, man. I mean, speaking of which, you know, you guys are scheduled to uh, return to your Central Pennsylvania roots here at the York Fair. I think it's scheduled for uh, July thirtieth. That's yeah. going to be exciting. You guys also have Small Town Titans on the bill. They're a great local band that uh, you know we recognize. Yeah. As far uh, awards as well yeah, they're uh, awesome. yeah i mean how how excited yeah. are you guys really to get back out on, on tour oh um yeah yeah and by the way they're they're a great band we're really excited to see them yeah, um goes yeah. online a killer three piece like, yeah yeah yep. and I, i've missed the three pieces we don't see that too often yeah. with the three piece like, like just power trio yeah. um yeah no i'm i'm so excited i'm excited to go back to the york fair i i feel like it's gonna be i think i feel like you know any show is gonna be a little bit of uh an emotional uh, thing for all of us, especially myself, but uh, specifically with the York Fair, it just it it just it feels like it's kind of a homecoming, and uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing people that I haven't seen in a long time because we haven't been back and not not just with the pandemic and everything, we haven't been back to Pennsylvania in a long time. So yeah, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be lovely, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get out on tour. Um, like I said, gonna need some dark sunglasses maybe for the first couple shows because. You know, and and most likely the tempos are going to be a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> you know, it's it's also uh, again going back to like that kind of surreal feeling. Like I remember when we were in their position, opening up for like Breaking Benjamin, who was like the the big local uh, Pennsylvania, the ones that made it, the ones that broke out and did it. We were looking up to them, like, oh man, someday maybe we'll get there and. Here we are, like the one, the local band that, you know, that kept on going and and still come back and and now it's it's cool to see the next generation, um, you know. Yeah, I mean that's something we definitely advocate as a nonprofit organization is you know supporting local music because people don't realize it, but every national act is a local act at some point. So if, oh, yeah. without that support, um, when you guys first started, you know you you wouldn't have made it to where you're at today. So we kind of try to drive that home with all the local acts as well to. Uh, you know, generate more interest out there. Um, you know, we talk about man. fans too. I mean, uh, everybody says they have the best fans, right? <laughs> everybody says that. Uh, but truly, you guys are exponentially personable with your fans and really take time out um, to have a relationship outside of, you know, a transactional relationship of we release this track and we want you guys to buy it. It's, it's a lot more, it's different. So what do you think really sets your fans apart from some of the other music fans out there. Um, yeah, our, our fans are really important to us. I feel like we collectively just have this appreciation because we know we know what it's like to be a fan. We know what it's like to, you know, if you have to make a choice between, you know, okay, um, rent or concert ticket, or you know, I got to drive, you know, three hours to go see my my favorite band or. Yeah, and it's uh, it's they're they're making an effort and they're they're taking a chunk out of their lives and they're putting their faith, you know, in us, you know, that we're gonna deliver when they get there. So uh, so a lot of respect. But uh, we we do we have some amazing fans. We have fans that travel all over the world to come see us. That come to like eight to ten shows in a row. Yeah, some some you folks know? have been to over a hundred shows, literally yeah. all over the world, just following us around. Crazy. And it's fun because it kind of inspired us to like years ago we just started switching up the set list every night and yeah. adding Im improv sections and uh, you know making sure that every show is truly unique you know and keeps us more interested and more fun on stage you know we're having more fun <laughs> and hopefully they're having more fun and it's you know it's amazing and it's also a, a, a family vibe too like not not 
traditional family vibe, but you know they've they've been calling themselves the freak fam for a long time, and and um, you know we're we're present on social media, but a lot of times I'll just kind of uh, stalk our our fans, and you scroll through and and you see these people. You know, or like there's a kid or, you know, or or a, a girl or whatever, and, and they're having a really tough time. And then all of a sudden, everybody will, will like rally around them and be like, hey, DM me. Hey, call me. Hey, like we're all here for you. So I see it. be It's a constant, you know, state yeah. of like lifting each other up and and uh, celebrating our differences and celebrating the fact that we all love this music that is, you know, this underground, you know, <laughs> uh, beast. So, um, so it's it's such a beautiful thing to be a part of. It's a beautiful community, and and uh, you know, I, I like the friendly competition with all the people that have seen us for like, oh, this is my hundredth show, and you know, we we try to make a, a point of 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 celebrating every time somebody says, oh, hey, by the way, this is like, this is number eighty eight for for Tara over there. It's like, and uh, we've we've done that a couple times for the the few that have been to a hundred shows. Um, we get them up on stage and embarrass them a little bit. And... <laughs> have, a, have a shot. Congrats. I don't drink. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you wonder how many how many people have the uh, Don't Mess With The Time Man CD out there, you know, if they're true fans. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. I've, I've heard from a couple of them. There's some bootlegs. And there sure. are some bootlegs on eBay. Be careful of that. <laughs> I was going to say, I've seen some on eBay, and they are hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So they're, they're rare and sought after. So pretty crazy. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, you know, I'm a I'm a fan of you guys as well. Um, we were actually going to come see you when you were out on tour with Alice Cooper, and then oh. in my family, my or the wives in our family scheduled our beach vacation, and we missed. Ah, it. Yes. <laughs> so I've not gotten the chance to see you guys live, but I will definitely be there at the York Fair this year. Um, okay. So looking forward to it. And you know, as well, I'm as I'm a drummer, so naturally, it's one of those things nice. for me. You know where. Um, when I go see a live band, you know, my eyes, my gaze, my focus ends up going to the, to the drummer and, uh, you know, feeling the, feeling the beat. Yeah. They say it's, right. it's the best seat in the house, right? The drum right. is the best seat in the house. So, <laughs> so, uh, you know, RJ is one of the best out there. Um, oh, you know, God. I really appreciate no. it, man. You got, you got some <laughs> double bass action, all your, uh, you know, stick flip stuff. You got the showmanship and everything. Um, who were some of your, you know, inspirations and idols growing up and maybe even now today? I think your question is, uh, why am I a buffoon on stage? <laughs> why am I co a complete idiot? Um, God, that, well, that's nice of you to say. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, uh, well, I, 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 I actually do single bass with, with Hailstorm, which is, uh, hey. which is really fun. It's a real challenge. I, uh, got into that, uh, you know, obviously grew up on like John Bonham and people like that. And, uh, you know, really got hardcore into that when we first started. So that I was like, oh, I, I want to kind of make that uh, uh, something with, with Hailstorm. It's like just doing the single kick, but trying to get fast. With yeah, my, so he does the double bass, like, but with single kick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Which is a really fun challenge. But uh, I'll be honest, man, I, I hate watching myself. Uh, yeah. I hate watching videos of myself playing because just, I'm just like, oh, God, I feel so cringe. But I guess the... Um, when we first started, we didn't have any production. We didn't have a light show. We didn't have anything. We were, we were the opener, opener with no budget and uh, cruising around in an RV, setting up our own gear. And then we just go on the stage and just go like, all right, well, we gotta, we gotta get these fans hooked and we gotta be the production. And I guess in the beginning, it started out by us like really trying to push ourselves to be the to to make the first move to exert as much energy as possible. And then you get that matched energy back and then it's that give and take that kind of made our live show what it is and it and that always kind of stuck with us now um it just it makes it more fun to kind of uh feel the music and move along to it you know so uh i mean everything that i do on stage is an extension of what i'm feeling in the moment you know and well sometimes i'll look at it and i'll just be like oh god what the hell am i doing you know <laughs> a complete idiot but it's it's genuine it's not uh it's not fake it's not forced we're not trying to to be anything that we're not it's it's just what we're feeling in the moment you know? yeah that's well said i mean i think you know you, then you're you're creating kind of um stage energy as well you guys are feeding off each other and then you're also feeding off the crowd so i like how you phrase it as a give and take there with with drums and you know, getting, uh, getting involved in it. Well, and, and we're also the, the bands that we tour with. I mean, some of the greatest players that I've gotten to share a stage with are guys like Ray Luzier, Will Hunt, Morgan Rose, um, Shannon Larkin, uh, 
J- John Fred Young. I mean, like just these monster players. And as a young artist, kind of as the new kid in in this group of uh, crazy drummers, I'm just like, man, I really got to up my game. Like, I just want to, I just wanted to get to the level where I'm like, at least I can compete with these guys, you know? Yeah. Cause you, you see that and it kind of becomes a friendly competition. You're like, Oh man, I want to, I, I want to really work on my, my chops and kind of up my game and, and try to out, out, uh, uh, maneuver these other guys. And, and, yep. uh, and you know, you're, you're doing a festival show and, and you're, these guys are watching it. You're like, Oh man, I, I I'm going to do something that's really going to throw them for a loop. Like check this weird thing out. And sometimes you'll fall flat on your face, but then you just kind of look over and everyone's cracking up and you're like, Hey, I tried, you know? So, uh, it, it definitely makes it more fun and more interesting, uh, getting to have fun while you're playing and it makes it fun for the crowd too. So, you know, it, it just helps the show all around. So I, you know, I encourage players, not just drummers, but musicians to like, uh, you know, put, put your heart and your soul and your energy into how you move and how you perform, but don't let the music suffer. Make sure the gig is solid. Make sure that you're, you know, that that should be the first priority. And then uh, everything everything after that is just icing on the cake, you know? That's right. And you mentioned monster players, you know, so transferring over to to Lizzie and Joe here. I mean, um, you know, you guys were named the music radar team's top 15 rock guitarists in the world right now. Awesome (laughs) honor. They do know it's uh, us, right? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm that? kidding. That's that's awesome. That's really great. Yeah, very cool. I mean, I you know I found that online. I thought that was that was awesome, and you know I, I figured I'd ask you guys about you know how does it feel to be considered amongst the best, and and not only amongst the best, but also kind of to be have that shared um, title between the two of you. Well, you know, Joe and I we're we're a team more often than we than we aren't uh, as as guitar players. I think we we complete you know with our forces combined yeah. um we kind of complete each other in in the instrument and um and so yeah i i mean it it feels good and you know like like any musician and kind of going off of some of what rj says you know it's it, i mean people can think we're totally awesome people can also hate our guts but really what it always comes down to is you know we're always sitting and we're like oh man i just oh, i just didn't nail that you know it's like, like whatever we feel about ourselves and if we're just doing the best we can so yeah it's all you know that's all we can do up there playing trying to make moments it's, yeah it's, we just like to rock that's i like the rock the yeah moments. yeah i think it's about as much fun as you can have on two feet and i'm glad we get to do yeah, it. two feet or or in your case sometimes on yeah, the floor back. you know <laughs> Oh, head over tea kettle, you know, on top of the amp. <laughs> on, on top of the amp yeah, <laughs> we, were op- we were opening up for uh, Megadeth in in Lille, France, uh, you know, years ago. Um, I think this was kind of our first one time our first in France. In yeah, Europe. one of our first times in Europe. Twenty ten. And uh, also great rapper, Little France. In the middle of the set, he trips over something, and literally all we saw was just feet in the air, like just the tri- amplifier. Oh, oh, went the like amplifier away, when when he, cabinet, yeah, like, he t- damn. he. T- he fell Damn. over. He fell over the amplifier, which I was very impressed. Actually, people are like, does he do that every night? That's amazing. Yeah, you should. You should <laughs> yeah. just put that into the set. That's the worst. Wow. You gotta like stand what up. A cool trick. You know, face the crowd, and not, you, nothing works anymore, and just kind of <laughs> walk away. Shame. Um, Alice Cooper told me that uh, he's. I tell. He's like. I tell my bandmates that that if they fall. Okay, wait, wait a song or two, and then fall again. That way, it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> then, then wait then another song. Then you're putting on a show. <laughs> I could have used it. I know. Yeah. Now you mentioned uh, Alice Cooper. You know, one of the things I saw, um, as well as uh, you're part of that upcoming TV talent shirt search kind of thing. Is that uh, still a thing? Was that put on COVID? How's that going? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we ended up uh, doing it. I mean, man, it was it was such a bubble to do that, uh, to, to film that everybody is getting, you know, tested, you know, every other day, like all of our noses will never be the same yeah. with the swabs and uh, just everybody keeping to like that thing. Nobody went out and we were, we're all in the same area. Um, but that was our, that was my first trip anywhere um just a few weeks ago just a few you, weeks you ago it, yeah, yeah we filmed it and oh uh, it, it's such a beautiful thing it's called no cover and uh and it's basically like american idol but cooler um it's for uh, all original bands uh so there's no hence the name no cover and um and they're for, they were from all over um some of these bands it was their first show because they had started the band in uh tw- you know 2019 end of 2019 and then COVID happened and so they never got to do any gigs so that was nerve-wracking for them because their first show is Alice Cooper sitting right there 
Right. You know, it's like maybe cut your teeth first. Start with you know the local. Um, but uh, no, it's so many amazing uh, you know so much so much amazing talents, and then just to be a part of um, the panel of judges. So it's myself, Alice Cooper, Gavin Rosdale, Bishop Briggs, and Tosin Abasi, and everybody's coming from a different walk of life. So the beautiful thing is that you know regardless you know who wins there's there's a record day uh, a record deal in the prize and also you know a touring package and all of that um but regardless uh, of who wins i i feel like everybody took something away that that elevated them you know we we were you know all you know all of us on the panel were on everybody's side like we want you to win so you know there were conversations and there was mentoring and uh, so it was it was a beautiful thing to be a part of. Also, it was my first time seeing any live music of any kind, you know, <laughs> in over a year and change. So we yeah. we all all of us like we're like that. We're like just wow, this is awesome. We're actually like seeing bands rock out, you know. So it was a great experience. I came back very very inspired. So once like once you guys felt like you made it, you know, RJ you mentioned you're like headlining, you know, the big venues around here. You felt like you made it. Like, does it get to the point where, like, the local acts are then like, yo, listen to my EP, you know, check us out? Like, when does it come into that? Like, yeah. you're, like you're, you're also influencers and, like, people are coming to you, like, how do I get to where you're at or, you know, listen to my stuff kind of stuff? Dude, dude there's there's one band that did it for us when my sister and I and, I, and Joe was just, you just joined the band when this happened. But we uh, we heard Seven Dust was playing at the Chameleon Club and we just showed up. We didn't have tickets. We couldn't afford tickets. We were We were really, you know not you know didn't really have couldn't really afford it back then um but uh we just we didn't really know how it worked because we never experienced it but and now we know what it's like being a headliner and having people just wait outside your bus and um you know we just stood outside their bus and uh we and actually knocked on the door which i we, would know we, we knocked on the door yeah <laughs> we didn't know we didn't know what the protocol was so and they come out and lejean comes out and uh uh, Lejean Morgan and Clint were in, hanging in there, and uh, and they were like, "Hey, what's up?" They're like, "Hi, we're a band," yeah. and they're like, "Oh, cool, come on in." They let us in their bus. They gave us some sodas and some waters. We were too young to drink, and they gave us backstage passes. We gave them our little demo, and we're like, "Cool, cool, cool." And then we go and we're side stage waiting for them to start, and they literally start playing one of the songs from our CD That's over awesome. the PA system. Before that, we're just like, "What the?" Fuck? We're just That's freaking awesome. out, like, "This is incredible!" And then you know, fast forward years later we realize that not there that is the rare exception sure. compared to most bands that we that we've you know experienced that are just kind of like you know they go on their bus they go to sleep they um but that or you guys had met them yeah yeah we, we yeah we 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 had we had kind of talked to them a little bit there at, was at some that rapport. NAM. there was some report but, but, but still, like, like that was okay. yeah that was but, like a that was a, a while before that and yeah uh, and you know i mean people funny the fact that they even remembered us. Yeah. And I recently I told Morgan Rose this. I'm like, I hope you know how wonderful that was to a couple of kids that, you know, you you went above and beyond. And I, you know, we literally looked at each other and said, well, you know, if our favorite band thinks we're cool enough or we got something going on enough to play one of our songs through their PA before they're set, well, maybe we got something and maybe we should yeah. keep going. So, yeah, we definitely apply. We learned a lot about what to do and what not to do from from yeah. the bands that we've met. And um, and it's it's important. Yeah, we get that stuff all the time. We we uh, we and yeah. uh, we listen to every demo and and, um, you know, whenever we can. And uh and it's just that, uh, sometimes you can discover some great, you know, un, untapped talent and everybody's just try, trying to do it, man. They're trying to make it on their own journey. And it's hard. It's a yeah. long road. And if it isn't a long road, you're doomed, by the way. Like anybody, I I would never wish that on anybody. Like, oh, hey, we just started the band and now we're signed and touring. It's a, it, it'll, it never works out. So just know that even though it's a long haul, um, you're doing it right. Yeah, that moment stuck with us that one single day out of you know uh, i mean uh dio said this so we met ronnie james dio and he we saw him stop his bus and walk outside fan was chasing after his bus he stopped he walked outside signed the thing and and uh and i remember him saying to us like it only takes 60 seconds of your time but it will last them their entire life and i feel like that one that you know maybe 20 minutes that they gave us and they were so gracious to us stuck with us and we looked at each other at that moment. I remember we were having this conversation and we were like, if we ever get to this point where we're the headline band and some 
local young band comes up to us with their CD, like we need to act like that because we felt how much that affected us and how much that has still stuck with us to this day. So yeah, we, we stay true to that. That's great, man. Yeah. Thank, thank God for seven dust, man. I we <laughs> owe them so much really. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, if there was any bands, you know, on the central Pennsylvania radar, uh, you know, small town Titans would certainly be one, but they're already opened up for you. Yeah. So they've already, they you guys are already acquainted with them. Uh, but there's another band called eternal frequency. That's a female fronted, uh, hard rock band. They actually do a great uh, cover of your uh, familiar taste of poison. Oh, really? That's awesome. Check, check them out. And I'm sure they'll, I'll tag them in this post and I'm sure they'll uh, appreciate that. I mentioned them, but, um, but nonetheless, you know, I guess, you know, we've been, we've been talking for a good while here. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I guess the best ending question is, you know, what's next for you guys? What's next for Hailstorm? Well, we're writing and recording right now. Um, we got a couple, a couple tentative dates in June. Obviously we have the York fair in July and, and we're already booking through 2023. Wow. Just wishful thinking yeah. <laughs> just in case yeah so. there, we're, there, we have a big tour announcement coming with next week uh mm -hmm. we have a good an awesome tour announcement and uh yeah Exciting. there's a lot going on we're trying to finish this record and just hustling and getting ready to you know we're, we start rehearsal a month before the first show just to like right. we got to do this again it's time to get get you know get used to playing a long time and yep. that whole vibe so i'm excited i can't wait to yep. You know, we've been in the studio playing together, but like to it's different, dig yeah. into those older those songs that we haven't played in a while, it's, it's going to be a blast. And can't wait to see everybody again. Yeah, the, the nightmares have already begun with me. Like I constantly, it's like it's like you know, the other night, I'm like I walk on stage and nothing comes out of my mouth, or I walk on stage and I don't know the set list. I'm like, what are these songs? You know, or I can't get to the stage. It's that's just not a guitar. That's not a guitar. What am I? Doing? <laughs> I can't play a sausage in front of this many people. <laughs> Is that what you really want to play, Joe? A sausage. Greasy. Okay, I'll... Slippery. <laughs> it's, it's a little slippery. Well, either way, I'm sure it'll be like riding a bike for you guys. We look forward to seeing you at York. Uh, once again, it's July 30th at the York Fair. I want to say thank you so much to the sponsor, the Ang Englewood. Um, and be sure to follow Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame, as well as Hailstorm on all social media. Thank you so much, Lizzie, Joe, RJ. You guys rock. Uh, you're our favorites. You're local heroes. And we really appreciate you uh, giving us the time. Well, darling, thank, thank, thank you so much for taking the time for us. And uh, and thank you for everything that you do for the local scene and keeping that fire alive. We'll, we'll see you oh, in yeah. New York. We'll, yes. be, we'll be there. Yeah, Make can't wait to see you. Come say hi. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Man. <laughs> see you, man. Oh,